Hi, this is Dr. K, and I wanted to talk to you about uh, week four of PRM 600. In some ways, this course always lags behind a week because we learned something one week and we put it into practice the next week. So, for example, in week three, we read the information about initiating the project, but in week four, we actually um, build the project charter in the team project and we do a case study that's focused on initiating the project. Also in week four, we start talking about planning the project, focusing on scope, uh, cost, time, and some of the um, other knowledge areas in the PMBOK guide. So let's take a look at week four. In week four, um, there is reading all about planning the project, and there's a quiz which focuses on the reading for week four. However, another part is the team project, which focuses on the project charter, which is part of initiating, and the midterm case analysis, which, as we described, is part of initiating. This week, there is no discussion. Um, in of an external project management question, and that's to give you more time to focus on the case analysis and the team project. So let's go ahead and look at the team project and what's required for that. I'm going to start by going down to the templates area. Um, the team project contract is something that you finished with and you no longer need to do anything to that. The team project template is the major document that you're going to be using, and you're not actually ready to start using the status report template options until week seven and eight. There's another folder down here called the PIMBAC, sorry, PIMBAC guide study templates. When you open up that folder, you'll see that there are four documents. One of them is a little explanation of team project templates in PRM 600. And it just explains what these study um, templates are. There are three study templates, one in initiating, one for planning, and one for executing, monitoring, and closing. The team project templates document explains that there are a wide variety of students in PRM 600, and not everybody wants to get into the nitty-gritty of the PMBOK guide. But for some of you, it would be helpful to have something that's more focused on the PMBOK guide itself. So the regular templates for PRM 600 that you're going to be using really reflect the documents that you find in business organizations. They, don't, they aren't referenced back to the um, PMBOK guide section numbers, and um, they're not exhaustive. They don't talk about every concept that's included in the PMBOK guide. So they're simp simplified, and they have sequential numbering, which is very helpful. However, some people um, have really benefited from having some templates that actually reference back to the PMBOK guide. There's two reasons that those might be helpful for you. The first is that if you're actually studying in the PMBOK guide and you don't really understand what it's talking about a particular process, you could go to these templates and see how um, we interpreted them when we put together a set of templates. Um, People who are actually studying for the PMP exam find that if they use these templates to map out one of their work projects, it really helps them connect their work experience to the PMBOK guide terminology and the recommended processes. For example, if you um, don't use a tool like the Impact and Interest Grid in your organization, it's kind of nice to see how that would work out um, exactly in the PMBOK guide. It just helps you study. 
So if you find any additional elements in the PMBOK guide study templates that will help you better explain your project, um, or if they enrich, enrich your personal learning, you're welcome to include those in your team project. But there is no need to. You can simply use the PRM 600 template um, as it goes through sequentially. Let's talk about what that would look like for week three and four. During week two, you used a document in the PRM 600 template um, called the Initiation Template Business Case for a Proposed Project. And there's a very similar, almost identical one in the PMBOK Guide Study Templates. Um, in terms of this week of three and four, you'll actually, in the um, regular templates, be using the 2.0 project charter and 3.0 stakeholder register and communication strategy. Um, there are corresponding templates in the initiating templates document, in the PMBOK study guide templates, um, for a project charter and for a, a stakeholder register, a communication strategies and an impact and interest analysis. It doesn't really matter which of these you use this week, um, but I think you'll find the ones in the PRM 600 template much more straightforward. When I look at the um, template that you were using in week three, I see that there were some things like background and business objective that were used in the business case. And there may be very, very similar things in the project charter. Remember that um, the people who may have seen, remember that first of all, there are tons of business cases that never actually get authorized by a project charter. And that there are decisions that are made between the time that the business case is put up and what actually is decided upon that goes in the project charter. So you're welcome to cut and paste some of the information into the correct um, boxes in the project charter. Uh, a lot of it will be reused and that's because projects are progressively elaborated. That's very much the case in project management. You get to reuse things. You never have to throw it away. The other template that you'll be using this week is the stakeholder registry, a stakeholder register and communication strategy. And this is a very condensed document that takes the whole concept of identifying stakeholders and condenses it down into a very simple um, format. I'm just going to contrast that with the PMBOK guide study template. There are actually three templates associated with um, stakeholder register in the study template. And, um, there's also a, a little guide to the initiating processes that explains, um, that summarizes which knowledge areas are included, which processes are included, what the inputs are to those processes, the tools and techniques that are used, and then the outputs. And the outputs are actually the templates that are offered to you. So let's go down to the stakeholder templates here down, 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 down. And um, the first element is this, um, is a document that lets you identify each stakeholder or stakeholder group, um, categorize them according to an interest in, um, and in their interest on, in the project and their influence on the project. Then it actually walks down and um, talks about stakeholder engagement strategies. How, what could you do to make sure that throughout the project um, you encourage positive influences and reduce negative, reduce obstacles? And what are their real expectations? And then um, here's a nifty little tool that's available in the PMBOK guide 
So we give you a template for that here in case you want to put that into your um, your project management plan to make it look more professional and simply to organize things. And this is an impact and interest stakeholder analysis matrix. And you could simply go ahead and type in, um, for example, in significant influence and um, significant interest, you might have your project sponsor. So you would simply type that into that box. And then if you want to go ahead and use this um, particular um, element in your project plan, you s need to just copy it, go back over to your, um, your other template that you were using and simply paste it in right here so that you can use it as part of it. I'm not really suggesting that anyone go over and start from scratch with the um, the entire team project study templates because they're simply too bulky for a quick class like PRM 600. But use go and look for what's useful to you, find it, and stick it in. The other um, document that we should quickly talk about is the midterm case analysis for PRM 600. Um, what you're expected to be able to do is show some progress against some of the course um, student learning objectives. And so go back, get that case analysis that you used for the quiz in week three, and answer the eight questions in this document. Um, the, you do not need to use APA style. Single spacing is great. You can use your notes, your textbooks. You might want to use the, um, the PMBOK guide study templates to help you out. Do not use internet or outside resources. Um, and the sources that were used were all focused on the initiating process and the environment in which projects operate, which are chapters 1, 2, and 3 of the PMBOK guide. Both the PMBOK guide and Schwalbe were used in writing this, but remember, if you're talking about a framework or uh, standard thing, that's probably PMBOK guide, um, and there are other things that might come from a secondary source. In terms of um, APA format, um, in week one, there was an academic integrity statement, um, both a video and a document. And week two, there was information on writing um, and critical thinking in APA style, that there's both a video and a document for. And I went back and reviewed each of those in preparing for this week and decided that if you go back and look at those, you have everything you need to do well on, um, on writing this without worrying about plagiarism and for having the right um, documents. So um, take a moment and look through the um, rubric that talks about clarity, depth, and significance, um, support and questioning, directness, answering directly. And um, there are, I believe, seven or eight questions. Eight. And you are asked to answer all eight questions. Each one is worth a different number of points, um, seven points, eight points, and the remaining ones are worth 10 points. And um, when you give examples for this, I would suggest that you um, apply these to the case study, the case study, that scenario, um, and not to your own personal experience. Although I've seen people then add information about their own experience that um, that was good as well, as long as they didn't get too long-winded. So let me know if you have any questions other than that about this week. I'll be happy to talk to you. And um, good luck. Let's work together.